Time for recent reads. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I'm doing a recent reads video for you. So far in October, we are about halfway through. I have completed three books, only three, but they are all pretty big. And they're all Stephen King books because I am trying to push myself to finish the King catalog by the end of the year. Which I am now down to five books. Four collections and Lissy's Story. Lissy's Story is the last novel I have to read. So we'll see how that goes. We'll have these three linked down below. Also down below is the Booksagram podcast. Check out the podcast. Um, Danielle's channel will also be down there and all that fun stuff. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the books. All right, so first and first of all, I have Little Maverick off to the side here. So if you hear squeals or whimpering or crying, that was Bailey if you heard that. Um, he is going to be right next to me, so if you hear any crying or any conundrum, it's going to be him unless it's Bailey, which that just happened. So the first book I read in October... I think I, fin I started this in October. Regardless, it happened in October. And that is Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. And let me tell you, this is the sequel to The Talisman, which is written by both of these guys again. This book was phenomenal. I am giving this five stars. It is probably my favorite King book of the year. Um, I would definitely say it's between this and, uh, Revival as my top two. This was so, so good. Um, so in this, we're following Jack Sawyer as an older, I think he's like 20 or something like, or 20 years later from the Talisman. He's like a retired detective, but he's only 35, so people are like, you know, why are you retired? There's these disappearances going on with children, and uh, it's in Wisconsin, which is a bit of an odd setting for Stephen King. Um, but it is such a good book. Um, there's a scene in this book that is going to live with me because of how gruesome it is, and it's when four gentlemen try and attempt to go into Black House. So... One of the fathers has like is in like this biker gang or something like that, and he like basically Jack and him are like you know kind of they're on the same page with stuff. Obviously, he's a little bit more obsessed with trying to find this killer, uh, the fisherman killer, I think is what he's referenced to as. Um, but he is more like wanting to get his son back, obviously. And so what happens is Jack is like, go find the house, but wait for me. I have to go do something else. They get to the house, and the guy's like, I'm not waiting for him. Let's go in there. And as they're going to, like, go up the drive of the house, uh, pretty much they get ambushed by these weird supernatural things. So the, the like, black house is, like, one of the doors to, like, the other side. Major Dark Tower references in this book. Major. And it is great. The ending of this book leads into the third one, or leads in. So, uh, I might have some spoilers here. So, mm, no. I'm going to leave it spoiler free. But if you want to message me on Instagram if you want to know, or if you want me to do this on a podcast where I do talk about spoilers. Um, cause I think the plan I originally had was to do this with the talisman and kind of do like a podcast episode with that, give my thoughts on the first two books and a potential third book. So I will talk about, yeah, I, I won't spoil anything in this. Um, but yes, in, well, in short, this has probably been like five minutes. This has been, this is probably the book of, not the book of the year. There is a book that is better than this in my opinion. This is definitely the King book of the year. It is so, so good. Very good. Kept me intrigued with the story the entire time. And very dark things happen in this. So, there you have Black House by Stephen King and Peter Straub. Alright, the next book up, I think, is another kind of 
sleeper book for me. Ha, play on words because of the title of the book. Um, it's a book that, just like with Dreamcatcher, almost everybody hates the book. But for some reason, I kind of enjoyed this book. And that's Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. So this book, A, it's a chonky monkey. It, so this book, we're following this town where all the women, well, it's an entire like phenomenon in the world. All the women, if you go to sleep, this like white webbing goes over your face, you get cocooned, and if you, and if all the men, like if the men wake them up, like they rip the cocooning off, the women go crazy and like commit crimes. Like early on in the book, this woman like literally murders her son and then just goes back to sleep with the cocoon over her head. Like d messed up crap happens. Um, now, there are, I'm going to settle on four stars with this book. So not quite as good as Dreamcatcher in my opinion, but this book was, so the way how I went into this book, uh, it kind of starts off like kind of like a thriller. There's like a murder that takes place and this woman is like the person who did it. And yes, I will admit and agree, the narrator for this book kind of was dull, but other than that, the way how I kind of started perceiving this book is there's this woman who, I think her name is Ellie. I think Eve, Eve Black. So Eve Black is this woman who has these supernatural abilities in a sense. And she's like the person who like when the disease or outbreak came, she came. So in my opinion, that kind of is similar to The Stand with Randall Flagg and Captain Tripp's like, that whole disease happened, knocked out a large population of the United States, and I'm sure even probably the world. Although I think it was mainly the United States that got, like, affected. I don't remember if anything happened, like, across the country or across the world or whatever. But, to me, Eve Black kind of just seems like a female version of Randall Flagg. And that's a very, very strong take. And that's a definitely a big stretch. I know a lot of people are going to heavily disagree. A lot of people are definitely going to bash me for actually kind of enjoying this book. But I really didn't have that many other problems. Yeah, I will also admit, like, there were a lot of people in this book. And yes, I will also agree that some of them, their characters really didn't, like, go anywhere. Didn't really do much. But the ones that did, really did well. Um, I know the dad, uh, well, it, so the other thing with this book is it's basically like, like, like sexism, like literally men versus women is kind of like what this book is depicting. Like men are slobs, men are like not good people, they treat women poorly, and like it's depicted a lot in this book, which is fine, it's, you know... I didn't really mind it all that much. Um, and, like, Eve Black is like, oh, yeah, you know. Because the other thing is, too, when they're in the other world, like, when they go to sleep, they don't, like, die. They actually, like, wake up in the same, like, world, but without men. And so, like, the women start building this, like, utopia. Time ages differently there. Like, a woman gets preg like is pregnant, has a boy, and then... Like, within the span of, like, three days in the real world, she, like, has the baby, like, that fast. It's definitely a book that I think is one of the more controversial ones. I haven't really heard a lot of people really enjoy this book, so I feel like I'm one of the first people to actually say it's actually pretty decent. If you go into it with the mindset of it's a female version of Randall Flagg, and that it's men versus women, and understand that yes, men do get berated a lot in this book. I feel like it's tolerable, but I don't know, that's my opinion. I feel like this book actually is better than what people claim it to be. Um, is it gonna be in my top 10? No, is it gonna be in my top 20? Probably not, but it's a still solid book, and I, 
I don't know. Same thing with Dreamcatcher. I don't really see all the real hate besides the few comments I did make, but I don't know. I thought it was a pretty solid story, and it's a pretty decent, like, concept, too. So, I don't know. I would like to see a world where Eve Black and Randall Flagg, like, team up. Like, that would be, like, that'd be bad. Because <laughs> Eve Black and Randall Flagg together, that would be brutal. Um, or if they meet and they have a kid, who knows? Um, but yeah, so there you have Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. Okay, the next book up, or well, I guess the last book up, uh, this is the one I most recently finished. When I initially finished this book, I told Danielle that I didn't think it was as good as anticipated. And I don't really know why at the time. Um, but now that I've kind of pounded it and sat on it for a few days, I think... Well, let me show you the book. Uh, Bag of Bones by Stephen King, obviously, because that's what this whole video is. Stephen King recent reads, basically. Bag of Bones... I don't think is going to be up there in terms of... It... The Shining, Dead Zone, like those kind of books. But this is definitely a book I can see being in my top 20, the more that I have pondered it. This book we're following an author named Mike Noonan. His wife has a very bad accident and dies. Come to find out, she was pregnant. Now, I think it was like a couple weeks pregnant or something like that. This is very early on in the book, so I'm not like ruining anything. Um... So there's this house, this like cabin he has in, uh, it's a summer home and it's called Sarah Laughs. And I always thought that was like a really weird name. Um, but again, this is also in Maine, so people get mentioned. Um, oh, who's the guy from Insomnia? Uh, I can't think of the guy in Insomnia. The main character in Insomnia is in this book and his, you know, his fate in at the end of insomnia is mentioned in this book i can't think of his darn name right now of course um and then thad bearmount gets mentioned in this book too the author of or the author in the dark half so very nice references in this book that i thought were really cool um but paranormal things happen in sarah laughs um but i like i literally like can't say that like with a straight face it just sounds so weird sarah laughs so, strange things happen in Sarah Laughs, there's paranormal things, and what happens is he goes there and he meets this young woman with a daughter, and the grandfather is kind of a butthole. He's like, she doesn't deserve custody, she should be mine, you know, this and that, this and that. And Mike is a little bit older than this other woman, they kind of have a romance, um, which actually kind of worked and was actually kind of sad because of what happened towards the end of the book. Um, I will say I think what kind of pushed me over the edge to really actually enjoy this story was the whole, like, Mike loses his wife. The name they were going to name their daughter is actually the name of the little girl that he is eventually, like, a father figure for with this other woman and, like... You know, his life is kind of more on track and tragedy strikes, but he's able, like, it's so good. And, like, there's flashback things to, like, the past with this town and, like, why Sarah Laughs is, like, such, like, a weird, sketchy place to be and, like, all the stuff that happens there and, like, why it happens. I... I did not like it more than Black House. I think I'm going to settle on four and a half stars with this book. I don't think it's going to quite crack five. Just because I wish it would have been a bit more of a happier ending for Mike. Um, but, I mean, that's all I can really say. I mean, it was kind of a happy ending, but I wish it could have been better with certain things that happen and with person. But... I don't want to spoil anything, but that might have, but whatever. Um, regardless, I'm going to sell it four and a half stars. It was a very solid story. It was creepy. It was eerie. And the only other, like, quarrel I had is he, like, 
talks about like sex a lot in this book. Like it's it's like annoying sometimes with the amount of times he's like, I have a stiffy, I'm hard, I have an erection. I, like the guy like has a boner nonstop throughout the book. It sounds like like it's just it's just as that it, it that's like one of the only quarrels I have with the book. It's just it, it it's whatever. So four and a half stars is what I'm going to settle on. Definitely a book that is worth the read. So there you have Bag of Bones by Stephen King. All right, so those are the three most recent reads that I have, all of which are Stephen King with two collabs with his son Owen and the other one with Peter Straub. I only have one more book that's a novel written by him. That's Lissy's Story. The collections I have is Everything's Eventual, Nightmares and Dreamscapes, Bizarre Bad Dreams, and Hearts in Atlantis. Those are the four collections that I still have to read, along with Lizzie's story. If you've read these books, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Obviously, try and keep it spoiler-free. I know a lot of you guys are going to bash me for liking Sleeping Beauties and not liking Bag of Bones as much as I would have liked. But, eh, it is what it is. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that The Stand is not my top ten favorite books of, written by him. Um, it's kind of sitting at like 10, 11, or 12, but whatever. All these books, it's my opinion. You don't have to agree, but it is what it is. Um, also down below, we are going to have Danielle's channel, the podcast, bookstagrams, all that stuff is going to be down below. We'll also link these three books down below. And uh, yeah, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.